us talk about the daily variations in temperature and warping stresses in rigid pavements. So, a warping is caused due to the temperature variations in the top surface and the bottom surface of the pavement layer. As during the daytime, the temperature of the top surface remains relatively higher as compared to the temperature of the bottom surface, creating a tensile stress at the bottom and causing flexural stresses at the interior and edge locations of the pavement slab. It also makes our slab to warp downwards from the corners. And as the thickness of the slab increases, the temperature difference between the two surfaces also increases. And similarly, during the night time, the heat absorbed by the top surface of the pavement gets transferred to the bottom surface and the temperature of the top surface gets more cooler as compared to the bottom surface. So during night, the bottom surface of the CC pavement remains hotter as compared to the top surface also creating a tensile stress at the bottom and making the corners warping towards upwards direction. And also there is a no warping condition as there is a time in the 24 hour cycles. Uh, this no warping condition occurs when the temperature of the top and the bottom surface of the CC pavements are equal. And this happens twice in a 24 hour cycle. And therefore there will be no warping stress at this stage and this condition is called as no warping condition. So the flexural strength of the slab decides its tendency to deflect which indirectly depends on the thickness and strength characteristics of the slab. Whereas the properties of the slab and the pressure deformation characteristics of the subgrade material decides the relative stiffness of the slab with respect to the subgrade support. And Westergaard defined this term as the radius of the relative stiffness L which is given as L is equal to E H cube divided by 12 K into 1 minus nu square raised to the power 1 by 4 where L is the radius of the relative stiffness, H is the slab thickness, E is the modulus of elasticity of cement concrete in kilogram per centimeter square, nu is the Poisson's ratio for concrete which is 0 0.15 and K is the modulus of subgrade reaction in kilogram per centimeter cube. Now let's talk about some of the critical positions of loading. And these positions are those positions where the maximum stress is induced and there are mainly three typical positions and these are at the interior, at the edge and at the corner of the slab. And these are given by the equations as stress due to interior loading is equal to 0.316p divided by h square into 4 log 10 l by b plus 1.069 okay now the stress due to edge loading is given as se is equal to 0.572 p divided by h square into 4 log 10 l by b plus 0.359 and stress due to corner loading is given as sc is equal to 3 p by h square into 1 minus a under root 2 divided by L raised to the power 0 0.6 where H is the slab thickness, P is the wheel load, A is the radius of the wheel load distribution, L is the relative stiffness and B is the radius of resisting section in centimeter. After Westergaard gave his equations, his equation of edge load stress is modified by Teller and Sutherland which is given as SE is equal to 0.529 p by h square into 1 plus 0 0.54 nu into 4 log 10 l by b plus log 10 b minus 0 0.4048 alright and his corner loading stress equation was modified by Kelly which is equal to s c is equal to 3 p by h square into 1 minus a root 2 divided by l raised to the power 1.2 Alright, so we talked about the positions of maximum stress in our slabs and it would be necessary to consider the conditions under which these various stresses in cement concrete pavements would add up to give the most critical combinations. 
The location of pavement causing the highest magnitude of stresses in CC pavements due to the both wheel load and warping stresses is taken into consideration for the analysis of stress and design of cement concrete pavements. So basically there are three type of conditions. That is the first one is during the summer midday, the second one is during the winter midday and the third one is during the summer midnight. Alright, so first let's talk about the summer midday. So during the summer midday, the magnitude of load stress at the edge location of the rigid pavement is much higher than the load stress at the interior. Though the warping stresses at the edge location is lower than the interior, the combination value of load and warping stresses at the edge is generally higher than that at interior. Also, the frictional stress is compressive due to expansion in summers and its magnitude is relatively less. So the critical combination of stresses at edge is given as load stress plus warping stress minus the frictional stress that is SE plus STE minus SF. Similarly, during the winter midday, everything is same except that the frictional stress is tensile during the winter season due to contraction of the slab. So this critical combination is given as SE plus STE plus SF. That is load stress plus warping stress plus frictional stress. But during the summer midnight, the critical combination of stress occurs at the corner of the slab on the top when slab tends to warp upwards and is resisted by the self weight. There is no frictional stress at the corner region, so this stress combination is given as SC plus STC, that is load stress plus warping stress. And generally, the summer midday is found to give the most critical combination of stresses. So this was all about the rigid pavements. In the next lecture, we will solve some of the questions that have been asked in GATE. We will talk about these topics in depth again when we will discuss the syllabus of engineering services examination. And lastly, I would like to thank all of you for being a part of Civilocity and appreciating it so much. You guys are so great. And thank you so much for appreciating my work.